It's truly remarkable to think that a small family business could evolve into one of the largest confectionery manufacturers in the world. This incredible journey from humble beginnings to the remarkable achievement we witness today can be attributed to the vision and dedication of an Italian entrepreneur. He took his father's modest bakery and transformed it into a colossal enterprise worth billions, solidifying its status as an iconic name in the world of chocolate. Michel Ferrero is a true pioneer in his field, but what many people may not know is that Michel Ferrero's father was the actual founder founder of the Ferrero Spey Company. Before Michel took the reins and turned it into a global empire, it was his father who laid the foundation. Unfortunately, tragedy struck in 1949 with the passing of Michel's father, which prompted him to change course and set out to transform his father's modest bakery into a colossal enterprise worth billions. But before we get to all that, let us first go back to a small town in Italy in 1925. Michel Ferrero was born on April 26, 1925, in Dogliani, a town in the province of Cuneo in the Italian region of Piedmont, located approximately 60 kilometers southeast of Turin and about 35 kilometers northeast of Cuneo. His parents were Pietro Ferrero and Piera Clario. However, in 1938, Michel's father, Pietro, embarked on an ambitious journey to East Africa with the plan to sell biscuits to Italian troops based there. As the plan crumbled, he returned home just in time before the beginning of World War II and settled with his family in Alba, a small town in the Piedmont region of Italy, renowned for its exquisite vineyards remnants of ancient Roman civilization, and architectural treasures dating back to the 12th century. It was in Alba that Michel's father took his ambitions to the next level. He started a humble bakery enterprise, driven by lofty aspirations and drawing upon his years of experience and passion for delectable confectionaries. He explored and tested several formulas in order to create a less expensive substitute for the luxurious chocolate that was being severely rationed during the war. A world without chocolate? Pietro couldn't even imagine that. So he rolled up his sleeves and got to work. The specific idea to create an affordable chocolate alternative was introduced by Pietro's younger brother, Giovanni Ferrero. Giovanni recognized an opportunity and a gap in the market where people yearned for chocolate but couldn't afford it due to the shortage of supply. After countless days and nights of hard work and a lot of experiments with various formulas, Pietro finally hit the jackpot. He stumbled upon a mixture that included toasted hazelnuts, cocoa, a blend of molasses, coconut butter, and vegetable oil. He knew this concoction would make a significant impact due to its rich flavor. He named it Giandujot, a nod to Giandujotto, another confection that gained fame during Napoleon's rule. The hazelnut paste, known as Giandujor, was shaped like bricks, wrapped in wax, and eagerly purchased by chocolate-starved Italians who couldn't get enough of this affordable yet delicious chocolate. Word of Giandujor's deliciousness quickly spread, and demand soared. Pietro found himself struggling to keep up with the orders. Recognizing the need to ramp up production, he joined forces with his brother, who had significant experience in food wholesaling. Together, in 1946, they founded Ferrero, setting up a manufacturing facility, hiring a workforce to meet the surging demand for Giandujo, and collaborating with local farmers to boost hazelnut production for their ingredients. Their determination was to guarantee a consistent supply, and this marked the promising start of Ferrero's remarkable journey in the confectionery world. However, despite the booming business, disaster would soon strike. By 1949, at the age of 51, Michel's father, Pietro, was dead, and so the original founder of Ferrero Spey Company never got to see the insane success his company company would soon go on to have. As unfortunate as it was, the founder of the company barely had the opportunity to witness Ferrero's rise to fame. However, under the leadership of his brother Giovanni and Michel, the business continued the task of enhancing the allure of Ferrero's products and propelling the company to new heights. Fortunately, the experienced Giovanni played a pivotal role in steering the ship and establishing a successful sales network. They employed ingenious tactics such as packaging super crema in reusable jars and pots, as well as deploying sales representatives directly to stores instead of relying on wholesalers to keep prices low. Ferrero's efforts were met with success, allowing them to cultivate a strong brand affinity and elevate the appeal of Super Crema. Tragically, disaster struck again. Just as Ferrero was experiencing growth, Giovanni suffered a heart attack in 1957 and sadly passed away, leaving Michel heartbroken. Nevertheless, life and business pressed on without interruption. Michel, Pietro's son, swiftly stepped into the role of chief executive, wasting no time on his mission. He set out on a transformative journey 
journey with the goal of elevating the company and propelling it onto the global stage. Although he had not pursued a university education, Michel had accumulated substantial experience and invaluable business skills at a young age. He had played a pivotal role in product development alongside his father, remained steadfast through the company's challenges and successes, and even played a part in renaming Gian Dujot to Super Crema. Michel possessed a deep understanding of the company's origins and the untapped potential it held. Therefore, after achieving success in Italy, he intensified his efforts to expand the company globally. Michel quickly proved himself to be a visionary. He sent a truck adorned in the company's colors traveling across Italy, distributing chocolate to children. Michel understood what only a few of his competitors did at the time, that advertising and marketing could generate demand. Under Michel's leadership, Ferrero opened three new factories, two of which were located outside of Italy. The key to his success was moving into the German market, where they converted former missile factories into candy production facilities. Michel capitalized on the post-war infrastructure and the growing appetite for confectionery bars that had developed during the war. In 1964, as rationing was phased out, Michel made another defining move. He rebranded Super Crema as Nutella. This name combined the English word nut with an Italian diminutive suffix associated with other foods like mozzarella, portobello, and citronella. However, this change wasn't merely a rebranding. It marked a significant transformation for the company. Michel had inherited his father's passion for perfecting the right balance of ingredients, and when he achieved it, Nutella was introduced with a distinct recipe separate from Super Crema. This recipe remains a closely guarded secret to this day, to the extent that there are no media tours permitted inside the factories. The original recipe was even translated into Arabic and securely stored in an Egyptian vault. Nutella was a product marketed to a broad range of consumers and quickly became a favorite among European children. Michel's stroke of genius in giving it a name with worldwide appeal opened up new markets. In 1983, he successfully exported the product to the United States, launching it into a global sensation. Michel Ferrero's success story continued with the creation of Kinder in 1968, a product exclusively marketed to children, aptly named as Kinder, which means children in German. With production already expanded to Germany, Michel had confidence in catering to the tastes of this market. Kinder, while more traditional in its confectionery approach compared to Nutella or Ferrero Rocher, stood out due to its unique combination of milk chocolate, sugar, milk powder, and cocoa, placing it a step above the rest. The Kinder brand went on to release a range of products, including Kinder Surprise Eggs with small toys inside, Kinder Bueno wafer sticks, Kinder Maxi King ice creams, and many more. The primary target demographic remained children. Michel's genius lay in his marketing approach. He skillfully maintained a clean and luxurious image for the company, while launching various products tailored to different markets, each with its own brand identity. Just over three decades after taking over his father's business, in 1979, Michel introduced the world to Ferrero Rocher, a chocolate that has become one of the most sought after globally. The inception of Ferrero Rocher had a semi religious aspect to it. Michel took the name Roche from the grotto in Lourdes, southern France, where a saint had reported a vision of the Virgin Mary. Michel was deeply inspired by this place, Lourdes, to the extent that he named his chocolate creation Ferrero Rocher after it. This inspiration led him to continue visiting Lourdes for the rest of his life. The profound meaning behind the chocolate was matched by its ingenious composition. Ferrero Rocher consists of three layers, a whole crunchy hazelnut dipped in Nutella, wrapped in a wafer shell, and topped with chocolate and roasted hazelnut pieces. But Ferrero Rocher's fame also extends to its distinctive packaging. Each piece is wrapped in gold foil, affixed to a paper cup, and stamped with the brand name. This aesthetic gives it a pseudo high-end image associated with wealth and indulgence. Indulgence. The packaging has become so iconic that clear plastic boxes or displays are often used to emphasize the gold wrapping, making them staples of celebrations. More than half of Ferrero Rocher's sales occur in the last three months of the year, leading up to Christmas and New Year's Eve. Additionally, there are now a variety of different flavors available. Michel continued to aggressively globalize both sales and production, spreading Ferrero's products across the world. He diversified the sourcing of raw materials and established eight factories across five continents, along with sales offices. Michel Ferrero steered his father's chocolate company to worldwide success by fiercely protecting its image. He achieved this by segmenting the company into distinct brands. Ferrero Rocher represented decadence and prosperity. Kinder was marketed for children, and Nutella was an all-purpose product. The company maintained 
maintained political neutrality and rarely engaged in sponsorship deals. Michel's connection to his roots remained strong. He funded the expansion of bus lines to bring in workers from the countryside and supported various social programs, ensuring a local workforce embedded in the community. Notably, there has never been a strike at the Ferrero factory. Just a few years after releasing Ferrero Rocher, Michel established the Ferrero Foundation in his hometown of Alba. The foundation features a school, a bar, workshops, fitness rooms, and medical facilities. It is available to employees who have spent more than 25 years with the company. The Ferrero company remains in the family to this day. After Michel's passing, his sons Giovanni and Pietro, named after his father and uncle, took over the company in 2019. The Ferrero Group had annual revenue of over $11 billion in 2018 and acquired $2.8 billion worth of businesses from Nestle, its largest competitor, further solidifying its position in the global food market. Ferrero is the largest buyer of hazelnuts globally, consuming around 25% of the entire global production of hazelnuts. Michel Ferrero's enduring impact is most palpable in his hometown of Alba, where one-fifth of the population is employed by Ferrero. While the global empire's headquarters remain in nearby Turin, Michel's legacy cements him as the king of chocolate. At the time of his death in 2015, he was the richest man in Italy, with a net worth of around $20.55 billion. His wealth, as noted in Forbes magazine's obituary, was attributed simply to chocolates, and a statue in Alba immortalized him as the chocolate king.